All right, so this is one of the more shocking stories I wanted to talk about and I couldn't not make a video about it really because I can't get it out of my head. I got this story from Rip Nutmeg on Twitter. In one of the most shocking stories you could read, a London hospital has cancelled a woman's life-saving operation at the last minute because it doesn't share her values. That value she had was that she wanted the aftercare nurses to be female. Former solicitor Teresa needs urgent, rare and highly complex colorectal surgery. She selected the private Princess Grace Hospital which specialises in women's healthcare specifically because she didn't want to be in a mixed sex facility. A victim of assault, Teresa made it clear to the hospital how important this issue was to her by both requesting a single sex room and bathroom and stating she would only answer questions on form about her sex, not her gender identity. During a pre-operation intimate procedure, a male member of staff wearing a blonde wig and bright lipstick opened the door uninvited and peered in. He made eye contact with her before leaving. Teresa wondered if she had been targeted due to her requests. Feeling frightened and vulnerable, Teresa reported the incident as a patient dignity breach and issued a request that her nursing care from now on must be from females only and not men who ID as women, something that is allowed under the Equality Act. There is a letter here that she wrote to the hospital. I'll just highlight some of the bits that I thought were significant. Obviously, there will be a link below so that you can read it all and investigate for yourself. Before attending the assessment, I completed a questionnaire in which I explained that I wanted a single sex bathroom slash accommodation facilities during my stay as per my rights under the Health and Social Care Act 2008 Regulations 2014 as updated in 2022 and a CQC Fundamental Standards of Care relating to dignity and privacy and in accordance with the Equality Act Schedule 3 single sex exemption and that I would not agree to use pronouns or otherwise engage with such manifestations of gender identity ideology. This is in accordance with my beliefs which are deemed to be worthy of respect in a democratic society as per the judgment in the four star case and are also listed as one of the nine protected categories religion and belief under the Equality Act 2010. I selected a private hospital specifically to avoid the NHS because of the Annex B policy scandal which has resulted in sexual assaults and rapes in mixed facilities on an industrial scale as recent freedom of information inquiries have made clear i know this because i am part of an inquiry into it it is a fact that mixed sex hospital facilities are unsafe for women only five years ago i would not have worried about this however the reality is that in the last few years the use of online porn has grown exponentially there are a myriad of porn genres which have been monetized and no end to the depths of depravity online 2.8 percent of heterosexual men have a paraphilia of some kind everybody has a mobile phone i do not wish to be exposed to risk why i am immobilized when I am in ICU following my surgery. So I personally think that these requests are not unreasonable. Towards the end of my assessment, somebody knocked at and simultaneously opened the door without waiting to be invited to enter. The door opened into a corridor. A young male in what appeared to be a blonde wig, wearing full evening makeup, including bright scarlet lipstick, peered in at me. I'm not sure what his role was or what he was doing there. He made direct eye contact with me, which in itself was quite brazen and so disconcerting. Then said something to the nurse and went away. I was horrified and shocked that any male member of staff would feel entitled to breach the privacy of a woman patient in such a way in these circumstances. It was especially egregious that this happened in light of the advance notice I had given to the hospital. So she'd already given a notice to the hospital in advance, just explaining the situation that she is a survivor of assault and has reservations about men being around her at a time when she's going to be so vulnerable and immobilized by this surgery. None of this occurs well for women who are vulnerable following major surgery. Accordingly, I have to make the following request. While I naturally accept that Professor's surgical team is mixed sex, I am again stating my wish that the nursing, auxiliary and support staff with whom I will be in immediate contact following surgery are female only. Please note that trans identifying males are not female. I will accept male staff entering my room only if they are the qualified doctors unless by prior agreement with me. I assume that I will have a private room with a private bathroom. I insist the above incidents is registered as a patient dignity lapse on the hospital incident recording system. She then had to go home for three days to prepare for the operation, in which pre-op medication was to be couriered to her. Nothing arrived. She called the hospital and was told the operation had been cancelled, with no explanation given why. 
She then found an email had been sent to her by the CEO of the hospital, saying that the operation which was due the next working day had been cancelled due to a lack of shared values and to protect staff from unacceptable distress. So this is the email she got from the CEO of Princess Grace Hospital. Thank you for your email dated 6th of October 2022. We have reviewed the content of your email. We do not share your beliefs and are not able to adhere to your request and have therefore decided we will not proceed with your surgery at the Princess Grace's Hospital on Monday 10th. We have shared our decision with Professor Fiaz and recommend you make alternative arrangements. I appreciate this is not the communication you were expecting to receive. However, HCA is committed to protecting our staff from unacceptable distress and we believe the cornerstone of good patient care is based on mutual respect and trust. The life-saving operation would have involved two leading surgeons, their clinical entourage, two surgery suites, a robot, a place in ICU, and a patient bed for seven nights. And this was all cancelled at the very last minute. So I'm going to read the email that was sent back to the hospital, and obviously I am just choosing the bits that I thought were significant. Maybe you can read it at the same time as watching this video. So in the letter she wrote back, she describes about the anxiety she felt and the stress that she's under since receiving that email. And then she goes on to say, It appears that you and your colleagues have completely misunderstood or misrepresented my reasonable advance directive provided during the pre-admission session on Thursday along with points made in my email below. I am a liberal left of centre Labour voter and do not object to anyone identifying in any way they wish. That does not mean that I must agree to nursing care from a biological male while I am immobilised following major surgery. I am a former solicitor, a former biochemist and a rationalist. My beliefs on this subject are ordinary, mainstream and a protective belief under English law. I have always championed minority rights and all aspects of principles of diversity and inclusion. Indeed, my husband is a partner in a major law firm, which is a Stonewall Diversity Champion. My request for post-operative care is no different from the requirements of many female patients in Middle Eastern or Asian heritage, and it is not unreasonable to expect to be accommodated similarly. As for the Equality Act 2010 and HCA Healthcare's UK-owned Code of Conduct, the Code, which have mandatory application to this matter, my belief is one of the nine protective characteristics described by HCA. I respectfully suggest that cancelling my procedure is a discriminatory decision made in error and hate. As per the Code, a patient has a right to request advanced directive regarding treatment. The Code states that they are honoured within the limits of the law and our organisation's mission philosophy, values and capabilities. There is nothing in my own values and beliefs that run contrary to the foregoing. Denying my scheduled treatment without discussion because I have made a complaint about a transgression of boundaries by a member of staff is totally unethical and contrary to HCA's stated values. Your response is evidently based on an incorrect understanding of the facts of the matter and has resulted in a rushed and disproportionately harmful denial of my urgent clinical need. You have not given me an opportunity to discuss the matter or attempt to resolve this misunderstanding. That is a breach of the code and is unreasonable by any objective standard. The cancellation of a critical procedure on Friday evening when I am due to take medicine for tomorrow for a procedure scheduled for Monday, if not reversed, i.e. rescheduled in the very near future, may have significant implications for my clinical outcome. I have already had one emergency admission with a perforated intestine recently. A delay at this stage increases the risk of further emergency and so is creating an unnecessary risk to my health. My procedure is particularly complex and requires a robot and two surgeons. I am unwell and the condition is life-threatening. Accordingly, I would respectfully but strongly urge you to reconsider your decision. I can assure you that I am a wholly reasonable person who appreciates the absolute need to treat everybody in all circumstances with mutual respect and trust. The hospital CEO also, in contravention of healthcare regulation, failed to confirm that she would register the patient dignity breach and did not offer to investigate. CEO wrote back, Your email of October 6th expressed concerns over an incident which occurred earlier that day included a number of requests and requirements relating to the surgery which was scheduled for the following Monday, today 10th of October. The incident is described in that email where an individual entered the room whilst you were blank in advance of your planned surgery should not have happened and is under investigation. We will come back to you once that investigation is complete. Your email also advised, my word, you wanted a private room with a private bathroom. You wanted all nursing, auxiliary and support staff 
with whom you would be in immediate contact following surgery to be female only, with male staff only entering your room if they were qualified doctors or you had previously agreed. You also noted that you would not agree to use pronoun or otherwise engage with such manifestations of gender ideology. There's more to that email, but I ain't reading it all. You can read that bit yourself. It's rude as fuck, man. With this all gone, probably the only alternative available to her at this now late stage is open surgery, something her surgery did not recommend as the best option. So basically, she calls them out. I'll read to the bit where she defends herself. Most importantly, I am a good character and particularly resent being portrayed as some kind of hazard to your staff. You don't appear to understand the meaning of the very loaded words that you employ. Harassment is an example. It's a criminal offence. Obviously, as a sex realist and a lawyer, I have checked the legal position on engaging with pronouns or otherwise. Not using pronouns or identifying a third party as male, for example, is not tantamount to harassment. I know exactly where the line lies and never cross it. Kindly refrain from stating expressly or impliedly that such a word applies to me. Neither is expecting same-sex care discrimination against anyone, and I don't understand why you consider it to be so. In fact, I am the party who has been discriminated against. Your bias in this matter is very telling. There are nine protected categories under the Equality Act 2010, and there is no hierarchy of rights. Gender reassignment does not take priority over the eight other protected categories. I have three protected characteristics. Sex, religion, belief, and age. Proportionality is key. As all of these issues could have been resolved if you had followed the mandatory HCA code and rang me on Friday for a conversation before making a final decision about my procedure, the correct first step would have been to apologise for any upset for the breach and promise an investigation. If you had said that the person was sorry and it was a genuine error, I may well have let it go. The second step would have been to explain the hospital position regarding my request. I am sure we would have found some form of compromise. It would have been in my best interest to do so. Instead, you will appear to have discussed the cancellation of my procedure with everyone except me. I merely received a thoroughly unpleasant email notification at 7.30pm. You ensured that no reply to the email could get through over the weekend as you switched on your auto-response facility as you were no doubt entitled to. However, you did not supply any alternative contact detail for a member of staff that I could talk to over the weekend. I feel that I was dismissed and treated like some kind of pariah with utter contempt. Just four days after the operation was due to take place last week, her condition began to deteriorate and she ended up in A&E in considerable pain. She has rapidly lost weight and may now be too weak to have the open surgery. As she said, the material reality of my serious illness is being totally disregarded by Princess Grace Hospital in order to protect the feelings of a male member of staff who committed a breach of patient dignity. Now I'm just going to tell you now, I have never read anything as shocking and disgusting as that. It truly, honestly has disturbed me. I am genuinely disturbed that here we have a situation where a hospital is essentially saying they're willing to let a patient die because the patient doesn't have the correct beliefs or the correct thoughts or the correct views, that it doesn't align with their values. It would be bad enough if they were just incompetent and forgot to tell her that they've cancelled the appointment, right? Or just couldn't be bothered. But you'd expect a private hospital that I imagine she's paying quite a lot of money for to be on top of this admin shit. It's pretty disgusting that they cancelled her behind her back, left her waiting for this operation and the pre-op medication, didn't bother to even email her to have a conversation, didn't even phone her or email her or anything. By the looks of it, they could have emailed her, given her a call and had a chat about what her reservations were and what her requirements were. And she even said in her email that she would have come to some sort of arrangement with them, some sort of a negotiation, which is how this works, right? It's an incredibly callous move from the Be Kind Brigade. Is this where we're at now? So if you don't believe in gender identity, that's it. You can't get treated in a hospital. Your operation will get cancelled at the last minute. If one of the nurses or one of the doctors don't like the look of you, if they find out that you believe in something they don't believe or you have different politics to them or you like something that they don't like, is that it now? Is this how we're playing this game, yeah? We're going to mess with people's lives over this. Do you know what? I hope this woman is able to get the operation she needs. I hope she recovers. And I hope she sues the fucking shit out of this pricky fucking hospital. I feel like it's quite dangerous. I don't think people realise how serious this is. There's a precedent being set here. If a private hospital can cancel your operation at the last minute, and it's a life-saving operation, this ain't having your tonsils out or anything like that. Life-saving operation. They can cancel it at the last minute, 
because they don't like your views because you don't believe in this mad shitty religion that I, I just I can't help but feel like an example is being made here I could be wrong I hope I'm wrong on that like really hope I'm wrong but I can't help but feel like an example is being made a precedent is being set and that everybody else has to pay attention because this is happening it's, it's just it's just the worst story I've heard it's, I can't get over it. I've been it's actually really upset, and I think a lot of people are upset about it. A lot of people shared their stories online about how they've been made to feel uncomfortable in hospitals recently because of the gender identity ideology. So now you have situations where there are men in the women's spaces in the hospital. There's already been in a hospital. And the woman was gaslit by the hospital about it. For a year they told her it didn't happen, and it did. It turned out she was telling the truth. The hospital was saying to her, no, that didn't happen. It's, it's a woman. What are you on about? It's a woman. That didn't happen. An unnamed hospital in England has admitted a woman may have been raped by a transgender patient after denying the possibility of an attack for almost a year, the House of Lords has heard. When police were called after it was reported, they were allegedly told by staff that there was no male on the single-sex ward, therefore the rape, quote, could not have happened. But almost 12 months later, it emerged that one of the patients at the time was transgender. And the details of the case were shared by Baroness Nicholson of Winterbourne during a debate on single-sex wards. I just, I can't... It makes me angry. It makes me really angry. So I shared it on my Twitter. Obviously, everybody shared it. Hopefully, everybody's sharing it. And I just can't get over how much of a disgrace this is. I know it's a private hospital. There's a lot of people saying it's a private hospital. They can do what they want. You know, like this, it's a private company. They can do what they want argument. Not when it comes to life and death. You can't sentence someone to death because you don't like their views or, or because they don't believe in your religion or they're not part of your ideology. You can't sentence someone to death for that. We don't even have capital punishment in the UK. Why would we treat it like that? And you know, what worries me about this is that this comes on the tail end of only a few weeks ago, there was a nurse on TV, but she said something along the lines of that she wouldn't resuscitate somebody if she thought they were conservative. And I'm sorry, but if you have voted conservative, you do not deserve to be resuscitated by the NHS. Oh, oh, oh. She got sacked, and I think that was the right thing to do, and I'm not even for cancel culture. It scares me to think that there are medical professionals working in the hospital who would actually think like that, that we've successfully dehumanised anybody who's even just a millimetre away from the left. That we've dehumanised them completely. And they're not just traitors of the left anymore. They're not just kicked out of the left-wing cult. They're now these scum of the earth right-wingers with the wrong views. They're not human anymore, are they? They're heretics. And we have to get rid of them, apparently. And there's another story I got sent. And this one seems a little bit more anecdotal, but it was published in a newspaper about a man in the UK. He went to the hospital with a suspected heart attack. He'd already had a heart attack the year before, so it was serious shit. And he was wearing a Trump hat. And the nurses shunned him. She told the other nurses not to talk to him. He got interrogated about his Trump hat. In the article, he expressed that this really stressed him out. It caused a lot of upset, a lot of anxiety. He had to stay in the hospital for several days where these nurses were pissed off with him and giving him attitude and shunning him. And I just don't understand it. First of all, Donald Trump ain't even the president of America anymore. And second, we don't live in America. So what does it fucking matter? So all this shit really drives me mad because I don't think people are understanding what this means. I think people just don't give a shit. They're treating it like getting kicked off Twitter. They're treating it like, oh, well, it's a private company. They can do what they want. They're not realising that this is a precedent that's being set that could happen to anybody. These nurses, these doctors, these hospitals, these companies, the you know, Spotify, Twitter, schools, hospitals, police. They're not the judge, jury and executioner. They don't get to decide this stuff. Nobody put them in charge. And, you know, I'm I'm upset as well because I shared it on Twitter and the, obviously the fucking trans rights activists came out of the woodworks for this one and they went all out on being wankers. I, I just couldn't believe it. They were saying things like, well, she made unreasonable demands and the the hospital told her to fuck off. Good. First of all, she wasn't being unreasonable. She's a...
adult survivor. She doesn't want her intimate care done by men. So on top of that though, she did compromise. She did say if they had a discussion with her about it, there's a compromise to be had. There's a negotiation to be had. She was willing to let male doctors care for her that were qualified or pre-approved. And that's completely reasonable. I wouldn't want a doctor that I don't feel comfortable around sorting me out. And I think it's absolutely disgusting that this private hospital that she probably paid a lot of money for couldn't even give her a buzz and had a word about the fact that they cannot guarantee some of the things that she's requested from them. Surely they could have come to some sort of agreement rather than cancelling it behind her back and not even fucking telling her. And then they tell her they don't want any of their staff dealing with unacceptable distress as if your life being in the balance and your surgery being cancelled at the last minute isn't a form of unacceptable distress do you know what as well do you know what pisses me off and boils my blood you've got convicted pedophiles in prison that are able to get cosmetic surgery have their pin turned inside out to make a fake v yeah, they get their cosmetic surgery on the nhs thanks to the taxpayer right and they're convicted people some of them are murderers and pists and all sorts, nonces, horrible criminals, worst people you can think of and they get surgery on the NHS then they go and you know everyone in the women's prisons. My point is they get treated with dignity, they get treated with care, they get looked after in the hospital, nobody's judging them, nobody's saying look we can't give you this surgery because your values don't align with ours. You know how is this woman who doesn't believe that men are women beyond the pal? She doesn't want to use pronouns. Is that really worse than being a nonce? And what hospital has values that aligns with being a nonce or a murderer? None. I'd imagine none. So why are we all of a sudden seeing this hospital say that your views don't align with our values? So, you know, tough shit. Some of the trans rights activists were commenting saying, well, trans people have it worse. They're dying all the time because hospitals won't give them the surgeries they need. First of all, having your pain turned inside out is not life-saving let's let's just clear that up that's not life-saving nobody has ever died from not getting unnecessary cosmetic surgery the worst one was india willy boy three tears for the princess grace hospital who treated me before i did big brother lovely star told her where to go which was somewhere else well done princess grace hospital oh so i mean Look, this woman's condition got worse four days after her operation was cancelled at the last minute, not really giving her any time. Who the fuck gloats over that? These people, these trans rights activists, are really showing their true colours right now. I've never encountered such a bunch of mental, heartless psychopaths before. This is absolutely out of control. It's not against the law to not believe in any religion, let alone gender ideology. It's not against the law to refuse to pretend that someone is something they are not. It's not against the law to refuse to use preferred pronouns, which you wouldn't even use in the presence of somebody anyway because you're talking about them in the third fucking person. This form of control is insidious. Let's get to Billy fucking Bragg then. So Billy Bragg's been mouthing off all week about cancel culture is not really a thing. Um, it should be called accountability culture. So he's talking about consequences as well because he thinks there should be consequences. Um, there's no such thing as free speech. Everything you say has a consequence. He doesn't clarify exactly who gets to be in charge, who decides what's good and bad speech, who decides what the consequences should be, who decides who suffers the consequences. All this stuff, it doesn't clarify, he just says there should be consequences. He was given the link, he was given the whole thread and the article, and this was his response. Did the person in question lose their career, have their reputation destroyed, and get banned from offering their opinions or art on Twitter, YouTube, etc? I just, I don't fucking understand this guy. I couldn't think of anything more disgusting than saying... Well, you know what, she had a life-saving operation cancelled, but... Is she kicked off Twitter? No. Don't worry about it. It's just accountability held accountable. Hannah Kay wrote back 
a survivor had a necessary operation cancelled because she requested female only care as she is entitled to in law. I was asking if you think that is acceptable. Personally I think it's dystopian and much worse albeit perhaps a natural progression of the things you've mentioned to which Billy Bragg responded I think it's a case of clashing values. I mean, God forbid Billy Bragg ever needs to go to a hospital. Doctor ever turns around and says, do you know what? We don't share your beliefs. We're going to cancel your operation, your life-saving operation at the last minute. How devastated would he be? He'd be absolutely heartbroken. How can he be this callous and cruel? What's wrong with you? I don't know what's wrong with him. First of all, he's made his living off of free speech and sinning things that are not necessarily always going to be popular or approved of by everybody else, right? Because not everyone's on the left, Billy. I don't know how you can be this heartless. I don't know how you can look at the situation and go, well, you know what? She's It's just a clash of values. The hospital don't like what she thinks. You know, tough shit. But he's made a living being this guy who stands up for the little people, sticks up for what's right, wants fairness for people. You know, when the push comes to shove, it, when it comes to real issues and real, really difficult things, he goes, oh no, fuck it. Fuck him. I just can't stand it. I can't stand this sort of heartlessness. It really upsets me. How do you make your career for your life for like 40 years going around being a good guy and this is the shit you come out with? It's disgusting. I just want people to think about what the wider implications of this are, you know. <sighs> Baroness Nicholson got involved. I'm quite pleased about that. She's an amazing woman, does a lot of good work. And I'd like to read out the letters she sent because fuck me, they're brilliant. To the CEO of Princess Grace Hospital. Maxine S. Green. Along with thousands of others, I was astonished to read your recent email withdrawing provision of service to a patient because you do not share their beliefs. I have scoured the Princess Grace Hospital website in search of a list of acceptable beliefs, acceptable to you that is, without success. That will make it difficult for me and everyone else to decide whether the Princess Grace Hospital is worthy of consideration should we ever need medical help. And that's a really good point. I've made a point similar to that on Twitter before. I didn't imagine in my wildest dreams we'd be here with a hospital but you know when it comes to gender identity if you're finding people, punishing people or cancelling people over this I don't think it's right. I don't think it's lawful because people who don't believe in gender ideology are not doing anything wrong. We're not breaking the law. It's not a crime unless Labour get in and that's another story. So my thing about it was if you're a private organisation and you want to be a religious company or you want to be a religious institution and the way you vet your patients or your customers or your services is by whether or not they comply with your religion or your ideology then you should let everybody know that beforehand. You should brand yourself as a religious institution, you should advertise yourself as a religious institution and you should let everybody know before they even set foot near your organisation that you are a religious institution and you will not serve non-believers and that's how it should be because then you won't waste anybody's time especially when somebody's life is on the balance. It's just crazy to me, it's crazy. The Baroness goes on to make a really good point as well. She says, I for example and Christian and Anglican. Do you share my belief? Were I a Muslim or a Jew, would you share my beliefs or deny me service? I eat fish. Would that be a problem? I know many people are vegan. Can you imagine that? You go into the hospital for a surgery and they go, No, I ain't fucking operating on him. He eats meat, he's a murderer. I'm vegan, I don't believe in that shit. Go somewhere else. Is that where we're at now? Like, Okay, yeah, sure, I will do a surgery on a convicted pedophile so that he can become his true self as a woman and be able to reside in women's prisons and get them pregnant, but no fucking way am I doing surgery on someone who eats meat. The Baroness continues, I believe in respecting the law, including the provisions and exemptions of the Equality Act 2010. I suspect that might be a problem for you, but would welcome your clarification. In fact, to make life easier, I would be grateful if you could provide exhaustive list of such belief as you do and do not hold, which might affect any decision on your part to withdraw urgent medical treatment at the last minute, because neither I nor anyone I know 
would appreciate being treated so disgracefully on the basis of your beliefs. I look forward to hearing from you at your earliest convenience. I mean, that's absolutely bang on. I couldn't have put it better. Baroness Nicholson, that's right. Such a beautiful way of word. I wish I was like that, but I'm just not that fucking elegant. But she's right. It worries me, you know, because we could end up in a situation where we're living in a parallel society. We could have woke and non-woke banks, gender ideology banks and non-gender ideology banks, schools for people who want to only learn about gender ideology and schools for people who don't want to learn about gender ideology, hospitals where you can get treated only if you believe in gender ideology and hospitals where you can get treated if you don't believe in gender ideology. It's a very unproductive way to live. It's a very divisive way to live. And I don't think this should be happening. I'm just editing this video and there's been an amazing update on Teresa's case. Another hospital which has a Da Vinci robot, that sounds fancy, has agreed to accommodate her while the Care Quality Commission still needs to investigate the actions of Princess Grace Hospital. This is incredible. I just hope now that she's able to have her operation and fully recover. This is what happens when everyone is made aware of what's going on and enough people speak up to oppose it. Cancel culture is not just being shunned by your mates or getting kicked off Twitter. This is real life stuff. I will not accept this bullshit as our new normal. I'm not having it. You shouldn't have it either. This could happen to any of us and it ain't right. It's not fair and it's not lawful. It's criminal. Like and subscribe down below because I need to buy some monster money. As the sun comes up, I just wanna have a cup There's one drink, that's the one for me Won't you please, make me a cup of tea